What's up everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic. And today's a beautiful project. We're calling this the 500E Hammer. It looks absolutely incredible. We've got this beautiful wide body kit bolted on there. A beautiful bonus part added in by Multiplier. It is private, so it isn't available to everybody. This whole kit is just the one piece, which I quite like. Very easy to put on and put off and line up and everything. I didn't do the lining up. Multiply did that. I just changed a few other bits in the config. We do also have these two bonus part exhausts coming out here. Just finishing it off looking pretty good. We do have the actual rear bumper to go on there as well. And there is a bit of a ducktail spoiler to go on there a little bit later on as well. This is the beast we're going to be working with. It's absolutely awesome and I cannot wait to get started. But before we do that, the competition to win the Ford DLC is over all of the entries are in people are currently voting for who their favorite is and by a little bit later on this evening we will know who the top three are and i will have sent them over to evan or to make his final decision about who is going to take the win and get that ford dlc and then i'll pick the top three on the pin board also kind of like this one here where you've got this one is the winner and then listed down the side is who the second and third is. That's what we'll go for for this one as well to showcase it and, you know, move this around a bit so it fits in a little bit nicer. That's what we're doing. This is what we're working on, and I'm very excited about this one. Let's talk a little bit more about it. I've called it the Maltese VM because I have done a few other little changes. For example, changing that beast of an engine. It is pretty awesome. We got it from the auction house. It's only available in the junkyard, apparently, but I got it from the auction house. I think that might have been changed after I purchased it. But there we go. Um, it's in very bad condition. Did we get a good deal? Absolutely not, because it's me. I bought it for 9694 and can sell it for 8164 losing out on 1530 before we begin. But I think we might have a chance with a few things a little bit later on. I'm not sure about the drag strip, because I haven't tested this engine in this build at all. But we have thrown in the twin turbo AXK Double overhead cam V8 into this one has 1,025 horsepower from factory. So by the time we add performance parts to that, it might be a bit too insane. And we might have another Ford Mustang on our hands that I can't tune and can't drive. But it looks awesome nonetheless. The AMG Hammer, definitely what we're calling it. Absolutely love this one. Let's get it started. Let's get it over to the car wash. Let's get it cleaned up. Here we are then in the car wash with the wide body 500E. Let's get it cleaned and see what colour it is underneath all that dust and grime. Pretty confident it's white, but there we go. Look at that. It does look good in white, but not what we're going with today. Let's get the interior done. Then get this beast back on the lifter. Start tearing that engine out and start stripping everything else down. Ready to get this beautiful beast all finished off. First things first with our V8 twin turbo hammer. What have we got? Oil pan is there, so let's get all that oil drained out first of all. Over you go, and let's get you drained out of there. Nicely done. Not a lot in there. Let's see what we've got going on underneath then. I have done a few things in here. For example, we've got the double drive shaft connecting into itself uh, because I couldn't get it to not clip through the floor going into the normal gearbox. It looks like not that much difference, but there is. So let's get this out of here to start with. Out you come, and out you come. Both drive shafts look very new, should I say. They definitely aren't. We'll unbolt that one from the invisible one and get you taken out of there nice and easy. We've got a little bit of clipping from the exhaust into that front cross member. Couldn't do much about it. I did try a few different types to try and get it to fit, but it is what it is. Now let's get the starter out of here. Out you come. Nice and easy. And the big old gearbox out of there as well. Ready for a new shiny performance replacement one that we can tune a little bit later. Let's try and rip that engine out of there. Then over we go and grab the engine crane. Let's get you and see if we can pull you out of here. Open that hood. Can we get you out? We can indeed. Definitely what I like to see. Then what have we got in here then? Well, we've got a wishy-washy reservoir. We've got the radiator and a coolant reservoir. ECU, ABS pumper module, power steering reservoir, brake servo, and a cheeky little fuse box with its lid on all complete. Down the back, we've got the battery, the fuel dunk, Fuel tank and the fuel pump in there looking good. Is that everything? Doesn't look like we're missing anything from there. No, pretty good. We also have two small intercoolers just down the front, just finishing it off. But let's drain the liquids from all of these. One, two, three, and four. Nice and easy. Right click, additional tools, drain tool. Click and hold on the container and it will drain it all out. We'll get the rest of this all stripped out. And I'll see you in a minute when we start tearing down the bodywork. 
That's everything mechanical on our 500E hammer all ready to go. We need to sort out all this bodywork, so let's start tearing it down. Off with the hood, out with the headlights. That's a bonus part. We'll come back to that in a minute. Off with the fender, out with the door, no windshield, That not side skirts. I need to remember what's on this. That's bonus part. That will come in a minute. Tail light, tail light. Uh, out with the door, out with the door. Uh think that might be everything let's just grab this wide body kit off nice and easy uh interior and additional parts disassemble all additional parts we'll take all of that off and that'll take the whole wide body kit off all the way around loving that we need to get these exhaust pipes out these are also bonus parts there and there and i think that might be everything for the exterior but we need to get in and get this interior out Take out these GW front racing seats. I did put the rear bench back in to multiply his original config. I just, I prefer it as a bit of a sleeper. I know it's not going to be a sleeper at all, but I just prefer it as a bit of a sleeper. Now, have we got everything? 1% on there. Nothing showing up on there. That is how we like it. Frames at 20%, and I bought it for just under 10,000. So what do we reckon on this one today? I'm going to say 750. Minus 7. Okay. I was not prepared for that. I don't quite know what to say now. Um, yeah, we've all seen the body shop for the 500E before. I'm not going to bother going in there. Let's just get us all back together and ready to go over to the paint shop to see what we're going to do with this one today. Time to get our beautiful 500E hammer all back together. Let's just get started. Back on with that hood. Then we've got the lovely fenders on either side and our lovely little headlights just in there. Windscreen on you go. Let's get these doors in and in, in with the window, in with the window and in with the mirror. No front bumper because that is part of the wide body kit from Multiply. Rear window in, trunk in and then we've got the rear tail lights and the rear bumper in you go there. Round to the other side, on with the door, on with the door, in with the window, in with the window and then the last piece I believe for that wing mirror just there. I think that's it for the moment. Let's get in and get the interior done before we pit that wide body kit in. Rear bench, I pit in the 500E bench to keep it sort of looking standard. And I'm also going to keep it with the 500E steering wheel. But the front seats are changing, but we're sticking with the Mercedes theme. We're going for the SLS front seats with a, probably a colour change a little bit later on. We shall see. But I believe that's it apart from the licence plate. Licence plate on you go. Apparently I've got two. Didn't mean to have two ones blank. We're just going with the VM plate on the hammer. There we go. As we are referring to this as the hammer. Now let's start getting these wide body kit pieces on and ready to go. Assemble additional parts. If we go to here, there's two here. One for the wing. There we go. We can see that on there looking pretty good. And then another one for the actual wide body kit itself. Going all the way around. Front bumper. Wide offenders looking very, very nice. And then back here, we've just got to put them exhaust pipes on. There we go. There is a bit in the middle. I believe that's for a roll cage, but I am not using it. So we're not using that final spot. Now, that should be everything. This should all be up to 100% now, is it? 100%, 100%, 100%. Fantastic. Let's get this little hammer into the paint shop and see what we're going to do with it today. This is what we've gone for on the hammer today. Looking very good. This is a metallic black. But something to do with this body leaves the lower side in a lighter colour. No matter what you do, what colour you pick, however you line it up, it will always leave it with a lighter colour. French Toast pointed out to me that if you move the brightness to 50 up the slider, you get an almost white down here and a black up there. It's, it's not quite white. It doesn't quite work out that way and it doesn't stay black. It goes to a grey. But it does work along them lines. It's very bizarre, but I love this two-tone effect. Got the grey down the bottom there with this metallic black up the top. Engine bay is very matte black in there. So we're going to play around with some colours. Mostly just blacks, greys. Maybe a bit of white in there as well. And we did also get some black on them SLS seats. Looking pretty good in there. Left the steering wheel in the same colour. Because it is the same colour as the dashboard. And the rest of the trim. And also the back seats do sort of match in with some of the trim on them SLS seats. Looking very good though. Pleased with that one. Even the little spoilers gone black down there. It is looking very good. Pleased with it. So now I need to get everything else painted. Get ready to make that engine look as good as we can in black, grey and maybe a little bit of white just for good measure. We shall see. And then start getting this beast all back together. That's everything painted on our twin turbo hammer ready to go back together. One thing I have changed is I just made the wing mirrors a dark black instead of they were sort of like this grey. Didn't like it too much so we just made them to black. Only thing I've changed 
since we last saw it. Let's get in, though. We've got a lovely metallic -y, shiny sort of grey on the shocks with black springs and the same grey on the caps there. Just about to see it looking good. This is going to be a very dark build by the time we get through it. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the small intercooler at the front, which is in that dark sort of grey silver. Looking very nice. The front cross member is in the same colour. Looking good. Let's get the rubber bushings in you go. And oh, where's the other one in you go? Just over there. Nice and easy. The front knuckle is in the same grey, along with the lower suspension arm as well. All blended in, matched up, looking great in that dark colour. Let's get the shock on. We've already seen it looking very good. Now, officially, these are the same colour, but you can see how they slightly differ but it adds for a good effect. I really like it. Steering racks in a much lighter grey, very metallic -y finished grey on them. Bit shiny, not as the same as everything up here. Sway bar end link is in the dark colour. Obviously, slightly different tone again, but still looking good. Inner tie rod is in the darker, and then the outer tie rod is in the lighter grey on there. Knuckle covers in the black. Then we've got the front wheel hub, which is in that very metallic -y medium grey, we'll call it. Uh, in with the bearing. On with the brake disc, we've got the hubcap in at the medium grey. That's how we're going to call it from now on. Uh, and then brake pad and a brake caliper just in that black on the top there. Finishing it off, looking pretty good. Very dark, as I said, with a few splashes of a little bit of lighter stuff in there, just for good measure. Very pleased with that one. But let's get down the back. If I could get down there, we'll use you in the middle. And then we've got the rear suspension cross member in that medium grey, along with the knuckle in that medium grey. And the sway bar in the light grey, looking good, looking good. Let's get the bushings in. One just down here, one up here bolted in, one up here around if we go bolted in. And then we do need another one, so we'll get this arm on, which is in that medium grey, liking it, with your rubber bushing just in there. Then we've got the shock. The main shock is in that same sort of grey as the front, looking very good. The lower suspension arm is just in a black on you go and on you go. And then we've got the upper suspension arm in that medium grey again. Very nice, liking that. Lower suspension arm at the back there in a black. This is going to have the spring set up on. Spring cap is in that medium grey. Then we've got the spring in the black and the topper in also that medium grey. With the sway bar rear end link in that medium grey as well, looking very good. Knuckle cover in a black, then the rear wheel hub in the medium grey. I feel like I've said medium grey a lot. Wheel hub bearing in you go, brake disc on you go. The drive axle is just in a black on there, finishing it off through the middle. Then we've got the brake pad and a lovely brake caliper in the black, matching the front, looking very nice. I forgot to pick up the battery, so we won't put that one in at the moment. We'll come to it in a minute. Fuel tanks in a black, and then the fuel pump is in a forced chromed medium grey. You can see how dark that really is. But I couldn't get any other colour on it. So we just left it. And it looks pretty good. Kind of just looks like it's all blacked out together. I'm going to crack on and get the rest of the other side of the suspension all finished. Then we'll move on to sort that beautiful engine bay out before we go and build my absolute favourite twin turbo V8. That's definitely something a little bit different from me. We don't normally get a full completely dark underside like that. I am liking it though. Looking very good. A couple of splashes of the lighter colours in there just for good measures. The rest of it. Just in a darker sort of chromey black, metallic -y, silver sort of colour. Really liking the colour scheme on this one. I think it looks fantastic. What do you guys think? Do let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, do remember to hit that subscribe button. We are very, 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 very close to a 1,000 subscribers now. And that has been my goal from the very beginning. I just broke it down into small bits for you. But let's crack on. and Let's get this engine bay all sorted out. I've already got the fuse box in, in a light grey up there. Just for good measure, I'm hoping it's going to match the lower pieces down there a little bit. But let's start getting some stuff in. Brake servo, a power steering reservoir. The ABS pump is in that medium grey, but it's very dark in there for some reason. And then the module's just in a black on top. Maybe I could have made that a little bit brighter just to finish it off. But it's still looks pretty good, so we will leave it. ECU type B up there. In we go. Coolant reservoir. Then we got a wishy-washy reservoir just over here. Uh, we do have to put that battery in, so I will do that in a second. Then we got the radiator just in a blackout on there. And then the fan housing kit blacked with the two chrome, two chromed fans in there. They're a darker chrome than what we normally use. Hoping to try and match into that a little bit more, but still looking very good. And then while we're here, let's just jump down the back and get the battery in. There we go. Jump down the back and get that battery in. And that should be everything now. So let's take a step away. Have a look inside the engine bay. It's very dark in there. 
kind of how I wanted it. We've got them spring caps popping up through the top in that sort of silvery chrome colour looking very good. And the fuse box, well, isn't quite the same colour. Definitely should have been just a little bit darker, but it's going to look good nonetheless. Let's go and build that twin turbo V8. Here it is on the block. We've got the block in a very, very light grey in comparison. The oil pan in a black and all of the gubbins all filled in, ready to go. So let's get started. Let's just start getting a few of these bits on. The alternator is in that medium grey and it comes out really nice on the bits that can't be painted. And then it's really hard to match it elsewhere, but never mind. Power steering pump I tried to match. You can see it's not quite got the same sheen or shine. Still looks good nonetheless. Just down here, the oil filter is in a cheeky little black. And the fuel filter is just in a light grey up there. Looking good. Engine heads, these are in that medium grey. This is the colour that we got first off that we tried to match everything else to. And I haven't done brilliantly. This is a slightly different colour, but it is meant to be the same colour. So we shall see a little bit later on how this looks when we get it dropped into our beautiful hammer out there on the lifter. Let's just get some bits in. We are going to move on to the innards of the engine heads now. We've got four camshafts. You already knew that. We've got eight spark plugs. You already knew that. And we've got four cam gears. You should have already known that as well. I'm going to crack on and get all of that in. And then we'll move on to the front side of this beautiful engine. That's all the innards done just there. Let's get these timing belts on. Down we go. Timing belt one and timing belt two. Then we've got a lovely timing cover, which is in that medium grey. Looking very good. Pleased with that. I think that looks very nice on there. We do have all the gubbins down here to fill in, but we'll crack on with that in a minute. I will just put the water pump on in the lighter grey. Everything else down there at the moment is all blacked out. So let's get these engine head covers on. These are in a light but dark grey just to try and match in. I'm hoping these are going to blend in with that fuse box a little more. And obviously the trim around the outside of the body. Let's get the ignition coils in. Not bothered painted them because they are going under a lovely little cover. On we go, which is just blacked out on there for good measure. Looking very nice. Let's get the other side in. There you go. And get it all bolted up and ready to go. Then we'll move on to the middle. And I'll crack on and get that front section all finished. Ignition coils, ignition coils, ignition coils, and ignition coils. With the coil cover on the top in the black. If I can press go. There we go. Intake manifold is in that grey. And it looks absolutely fantastic on there. Very pleased with that. Now I'm going to crack on. I'm going to get all of these rollers and bits in. And we'll move on to get a little bit more done. On this beautiful twin turbo V8. That's all the rollers in, the water pump pulley and the crankshaft pulley in. Let's get the serpentine belts in. One here, one over here. We've got a lovely little idle roller just down there in the black, finishing it off. And a belt tensioner in that medium grey on there, looking very, very good. Let's move up. We've got the fuel rails. These are both blacked out, looking pretty good on there. Just sort of separating it all up a little bit. Then we've got the throttle down the back in that medium grey, matching in, looking nice. And then the last piece to go on this beautiful engine is the intake, the exhaust manifolds, intake manifolds, the exhaust manifolds on here. They are looking beautiful. They're in a very light matte finish, and I'm hoping they're going to match in with the exhaust pipes that stick out the end. We'll check them out in a bit. Turbos obviously in the same color to go through the exhaust. If I could get around the other side, there we go. Let's get you on and that last turbo on. Then I'm going to grab some pictures of this beautiful twin turbo V8 before we go and drop it in. That wonderfully good looking wide bodied hammer out there looking fantastic. Time to get this twin turbo block dropped into the beautiful hammer outside. In we go. Let's see how good this is going to look inside that beautiful engine bay. That's pretty good in all honesty. And them greys are not far off the grey round the edge there. That is very good. I am pleased with that. And it actually makes these look, the fuse box look a lot closer than it did before. That's looking fantastic in there. Incredibly pleased with that one. Looking good. Maybe we should have done for red head covers just to throw a splash of red in there. But it's done now and I like it. So we're leaving it anyway. What do you guys think? Should I put red on the engine head covers there? Just to give it a bit more shine. This is the colour I tried to match in the exhaust to. We just step away a little bit. You can see once there's a bit of light on it, it is almost a white. It's not quite a white. I have fiddled with some colours to get there. It's just almost a white. So let's get in and start getting some of this all together. We'll start with the gearbox. Now I haven't painted it at all because it almost perfectly matches in with the colour of that engine block there. I was very pleased when I tried that out earlier. I was like, oh, that, well, that works. We'll leave that as that. The starter is in that lighter grey, sort of blending in off of these parts just here. 
And then we've got our two drive shafts, both in that dark, sorry, that medium grey, we're calling that one. There we go, in we go. And let's get the rear one in as well, both in that colour, looking fantastic. Loving that. Then we've got some exhaust to do. So let's go. We already know the colour. We can see it on some of the parts already on. So let's get the rest of it in and then check out how good it looks from underneath in a moment. On you go, in you go, and last piece there, in you go. Now, I specifically went for this exhaust to try and make it fit in with them exhaust tips. That's everything apart from the wheels, so let's take a look. From here, it's looking pretty good. That, that gearbox looks incredibly bright under here for some reason. But let's carry on going down the back. We've got all of that white stuff sticking on through. And then as they sort of mix into there, you can see it's ever so slightly different because these have got a weird colouring to them. I don't know what it is, but it is very close. And I'm loving the oil out effect you've got going on the back there, the burning, whatever you want to call it. It looks absolutely fantastic. Very, very pleased with this beautiful beast so far. Let's get the wheels done, the windows tinted, the liquids topped up, and this beautiful 500E hammer outside in the sun. Well, here we are then, finished with our beautiful AMG 500E hammer. That's what we're calling it anyway. It's officially just the 500E, but it looks fantastic with this wide body kit on it. So we are calling this the hammer. We've also stuffed the twin turbo V8 in there as well. Looking absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. Loving the color scheme on that. Lots of greys. Not too in your face. Quite liking it. Let's talk about these rims, though. These are the 31A. That's the rim we've got on there today. I think they look pretty close to what the hammer actually had on it. Not exact, but as close as we could get in game. I've gone for a 19 inch rim at the front here with a 215 width and a 25 profile and ET of 65 to bring it all the way out in line with these fenders. Down at the back, it is still a 19 inch rim, but it's a 315 width because we have a beast of an engine in there. We're going to need a bit more grip on the drag strip. Still a 25 profile and ET of 65 on there. Absolutely fantastic. Loving this car. Really enjoyed this build. It has been a lot of fun. I've been waiting to do it for such a long time. Didn't want to do it too early. But let's get in and see what the interior is like in here. Obviously, we swapped out to the SLS seats, and I think they look really good in there. Kept the steering wheel, the original steering wheel and original cover. But let cover and the original color. But let's get this V8 started and see what this engine sounds like. Nice little grumble of the V8. Let's give it some gas and hear that turbo. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I love this engine so much. A grumble of a V8 with that beautiful turbo whistle in there just for good measure. Let's get this beast onto the dyno. See what the horsepower is going to be and what its drag rating is. Here we are then with the Mercedes-Benz 500E AMG Hammer. That's what we're calling it anyway. With a twin turbo V8 and 1,025 factory horsepower. How much have we increased today with our performance parts from this beautiful Mercedes? And what will his drag rating be? A gain of 1,361 horsepower. 133%. That is some good numbers there. Bringing us up to 2,386 horsepower with an obvious drag rating of A999 on there. We all saw that part coming. This is an absolute beast, and I cannot wait to get it onto the drag strip. Let's go and have a look at the gearbox tuning setup for today. There she is. We've gone for a straight-up three ratio, 94 kilometers an hour in first gear, up to a recorded 439. We'll see what we get to on the drag strip in just a moment. Who do you think we'll be up against today? Probably lots of hoonicorns, but how many do you reckon? Let's go. Let's find out. Back at the drag strip with our 500E hammer, as we are calling it, the little wide body kit with the twin turbo V8 in there as well. King of the Sands, one mile, A class, pay the thousand entry fee. And who have we got? A large clump of Hoonicorns just down the end there, looking good. Multiply in the Hoonicorn version for the creator or part creator of today's beautiful build. Thank you for that. It looks awesome. Against our friend who we cannot pronounce in the version 2 Hoonicorn. Then more Hoonicorns down there and a GT66. Who else have we got then? French Toast in a lovely little GT66 as well. Ooh, if he makes it through, will be our second contender. That's as long as we make it through against the first race, which is the Ford Mustang GT66. Let's get in and see if we can beat that with our beautiful hammer. Now that's a starting lineup there. The Ford Mustang GT66, black on black, looking absolutely stunning. Versus our black on grey Mercedes-Benz 500E AMG Hammer. 
as we're calling it. Let's get in and see if we can beat this GT66. Let's go. High revs on this one. Let's just get into second and then into third and maybe just into fourth at some point. Not 100% sure when, but it seems like we're doing all right. Into fifth gear, up into the top end. Let's get this insanely fast beast across the finish line and see what times and speeds we get with this one today. Well, that seemed to be over a lot quicker than I anticipated. It was going to be eight and a half seconds or just over to the quarter of a mile. 19 and a half seconds to the one mile with a top speed of 437 kilometers an hour. I am very impressed with that. Wasn't quite expecting that in our first race. Absolutely smashing the GT66. Did French Toast make it through? And is he our next competitor? Let's go take a look. Unfortunately, French Toast was knocked out in the other GT66. We are up against the person who beat him, Randy Wilson, in the Dodge Charger 777. Hopefully, we'll do him at some justice there and we'll make it through to the next round. Multiply still in in the version 4 Hoonicorn. Sadly, our friend who we can't pronounce is out, which is a bit of a shame. But we only have two Hoonicorns left in there, which I'm always pleased about when that happens very early on. Let's get in, though, and see if we can beat the Dodge Charger 777. The Dodge Charger 777, a bullet looking thing in a beige on white, which is a weird combination that I kind of enjoy, but not that much at the same time. Not a big fan of beige up against our beautiful hammer. Let's get in and see if we can beat it. Let's just go. Off the line, into second, into third about there will do. Into fourth as this revs incredibly high. We'll go into fifth now, I reckon that should do it. Are we winning? We are, and it looks like we are pulling away from that beautiful Dodge Charger 777. Let's get across the line. Was that any better than our first run? 8.549. It was ever so slightly faster. Pleased with that. And 19.647 to the one mile was a little bit slower, but we are a little bit faster than the quarter mile, so I'm happy. And the top speed down just a little bit to 436 kilometers an hour for that run. So far, this is the best run in our beautiful little hammer. Let's get into the next one. We did avenge French Toast, and we are in to the next round. Definitely happy to see that, although we are against another Dodge Charger 777. And that race, although we smashed it, was a little bit close for most of the race there. So we'll see if we can beat the next one. Multiply has been knocked out, which is always a shame. But we are left with another GT66, the Nissan Skyline GTR Drag Edition, and another Dodge Charger 777. Hopefully we can get that one out in this round and make it into the final. Definitely looks better in green than it does in beige. That looks absolutely awesome with the green, black and the white little livery for the Daytona down at the back looking fantastic. Not as nice as our AMG hammer over there, which looks fantastic. Hopefully we'll be able to beat this one just like we beat the last one. So let's go. We pulled off the line into second. Oh, it's getting a bit further away from us this time into third. Into fourth. Come on, we can catch it. We can catch it. We can catch it. We can pass it. Into fifth. We are past it. That's definitely making me feel happy. I definitely like that. Let's get across the line and see if this was a better run than the first one. There we go. Across the line. 8.696. Unfortunately, that was almost a, well, more than a second slower than our first run. And a 19.822 to the one mile. Also quite a bit slower than our first run. I said almost a second. I didn't mean a second, I meant point one of a second slower. Obviously not quite a second, but there we go. We did manage to win, which means we have made it into the final. And I definitely like it when that happens, especially with a beautiful custom car joint effort between me and Multi. Well, there it is. We are into the final with our Mercedes-Benz 500e hammer. Definitely referring it to as the hammer at the moment. And our final race is against the Ford Mustang GT66. We did beat one of them in our first race, so we've only had two different competitive vehicles today. Two Dodge Charger 777s, two Ford Mustang GT66s. We're in the final. Can we win? Let's go find out. It's almost the same car as in the first race, but it still looks absolutely fantastic. I do love the Ford Mustang GT66. Can we beat it in our AMG hammer? Let's find out. Let's go. Off the line. Into second. Wow, that thing is gone. Into third. Maybe too early on that one there. We'll go into fourth. And hopefully maybe catch that Mustang up. Into fifth gear. Come on, can we catch it and pass it and win? Off you go. See you later, Mustang. Definitely happy with that. We're going to win another tournament. 
And across the line, what have we got for our final race? 8.668, not quite the slowest, but not as good as our first two runs there. A 19.824 to the quarter of a mile, uh, to the one mile, sorry, is definitely our slowest run of the day. And the top speed at 436 isn't bad either. Let's get back. Let's collect our winnings. There we have it. So good to have the 11,250 showing up on that screen again. Always like it. Obviously, minus our entry fee leaves us with a profit of 10,250. But we won a tournament in the beautiful Hammer. Let's get back to the garage and let's see if we can make some money from the sale of this beautiful car. All finished with the Mercedes-Benz 500E wide body or the hammer, as we've been affectionately calling this beautiful build this whole time. We managed to get it 20th on the speederboard out of 55, which one is impressive in its own right. But bearing in mind, the original 500E currently sits 51st. 51st on the speederboard, so this is a lot of places higher. 31 places higher up than the original 500E, but that twin turbo V8 has definitely done that for us. With a, with a time of, of 8.549 to the quarter of a mile and a 19.647 to the one mile, this thing was definitely fast. It, it was furious. We've definitely enjoyed this one. Sorry for that terrible, terrible pun there. With a top speed of 436 kilometers an hour in that specific run, it was definitely good nonetheless. On to some figures, though. We bought the car for 6, 9,694, sorry, and uh, we could have sold it at a loss of 1,530. Since then, we've spent 56,281 modifying, upgrading, and tuning this car, putting our total spend at 65,000. 975 the real question is though can we make a profit from this little beast there is only one way to find out let's take a look all 100 percent finished now are looking fantastic that engine ramped up from 1025 factory horsepower to 2386 a gain of 133 percent absolutely incredible but can we make some money 65 975 <laughs> no 58,171 is the sale price for our beautiful AMG Hammer. Um, yeah, leaves us at minus 7,804. Luckily, though, we did win the drag tournament, which did give us some winnings of 10,250. Leaves us with the tiniest little bit of profit of 2,446 profit from our beautiful AMG Hammer. And that engine in there looks absolutely beautiful. I'm very pleased with this one, but we do need to say goodbye and take that little bit of profit with us. I can't share the link to you to this one because it is private and it doesn't belong to me. So I can't share it, but it is cool. And nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed the build watching the cool stuff that we can make here. But anyway, let's say goodbye to you. Off you go with our tiny little bit of profit. And uh, then I'm going to say, what have we got next? Aero 404, file not found. Yeah. Um, I don't have a car on the truck for the next episode. And the reason I don't have a car on the truck for the next episode is because I'm going to be showing you something pretty cool on Monday that um, I've got access to and not everyone else will have. That is it for today's video. I do hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We are 12 away from 1,000. So if you could help me get there, it would be absolutely fantastic. Do click that button. Leave us a like. Leave us a comment. Let me know what we should do in the future. Always like to hear from you. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you back here on Monday with a very special new video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a beautiful day, whatever you're getting up to. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.